Hey everybody, welcome to the GMG Review. Today we're taking a look at Pyron Flood for Warhammer Age of Sigmar's Warcry, uh, which was kindly sent as a complimentary review copy by Games Workshop. So what do we got here? This is another of the add-on expansions for third edition Warcry, um, and it adds another terrain piece, like a bespoke terrain piece, the idol of the old ones. Look at, it. I, feel, I feel like this is like the prow of the ship where it's one of the guns. It shoots like nose lasers, <laughs> like has a giant crystal on it. Um, we get the Idrillin Idr River Blades, which I imagine are also going to be a new unit. Uh, they're Streamrunners and Crest Dancers. They're like a two build, almost like the old Way Watchers, where you could build them as two different things. A uh, kit for the, um, the whatchamacallit, the uh, Lumineth Realm Lords. And then you get a Pure Flood Seneschal to fight with them too. Um, they're, they're a little war dancery. I kind of like them. And then we get some weird uh, flame wraiths, Balefied Guards, Torch Wraiths, and the Deacon of Flames uh, for the Pyrogeists, which is a unit for, obviously, the Night Haunts. Um, very cool models. And, of course, this is also going to come with a book with its own campaign um, and uh, ability to, to play through. So there's a train piece, just one sprue. I, I really like this format for Warcry where, uh, much like with like Predator's Prey, Hunters and Hunted, we add like just a cool piece of terrain, um, to like your existing terrain set that you had in the first box, um, the Gurish terrain set, and then some new warbands. And you can split this with a buddy and play through the games. That's what Mike and I have been doing through this whole thing. So here we have the um, the the single, like, I guess it's a double frame. Uh, I don't know if these will be, I don't know how they're, they're parsed, but it looks like they're parsed per quadrant here. So like one guy, because the numbers are all relatively sequential on one spot. Yeah, this looks like it all goes together roughly. Um, and that's cool. Like we got one, two, it looks like three on this one. Uh, and then over here we've got the, I don't see you got lots of options for swords and spears. Yeah, they're very like uh, eternal guard. Um, and then of course we have the little, little wraith, big wraiths for the night haunts, which are also great models. Um, as much as I like these, these have such a like grim dark to them. The, the night haunts are some of like the new undead from Games Workshop. Man, it's funny how, like, when you think back to the old Undead versus the new Undead, the old Undead were okay, like, with the modularity of, like, 6th and 7th edition Warhammer Fantasy Battle. All of the Undead stuff for um, Age of Sigmar has just been off the chain. Like, incredible. And, and times Undead were cool, too. 8th edition Undead were cool, too. But, man, these, these are just... They got that grimdark flavor. Um, you're going to get your cards. So all this is the Ward Cry card pack. It gets you, of course, your uh, Warband card for all your abilities and your stack cards for all your guys. Um, you're also going to get a set train, uh, twist, plot, and uh, mission card. Um, and then we have the overall stack cards and universal ability cards. I love that you get a universal ability card in each of these. I wish you got two, though. It would be so much nicer if you got a second one, because then both players could have one during a game. Um, but it's all the universal abilities on here. And it's double-sided and themed to the box set. So let's check out the book. And of course, our building instructions and our bases are in here too, but I'm not going to spend too much time on that. All right. Pyre and Flood. Uh, full color. Flames lick at the carnivorous trees of the Gnarlwood, threatening to grow into an inferno that consumes all its past. So this is basically the water um, cast of the Lumineth against these sort of like death fire bad guys uh, coming out of Night Haunts. So you've got Order versus Death, um, and it's set here. The Screaming Blaze is a horrifying sight. There's a huge like tornado of fire, a column shrieking uh, spirit stuff the size of a castle tower, and it's kind of moving through everything. <laughs> so it's 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 like, I don't know, are the elves Bill Paxton and Twister? Maybe, sort of. Unnatural flames sweep across the Gnarlwood, and all those swallowed up by the Inferno are consumed into body and soul. Yet there are those who would combat this spectral firestorm with elemental power, awakening the wrath of ancient river spirits to rise up and sweep against its malignancy. So it's basically this, this sort of like fight to try and stop this giant fire from consuming everything. Um, Nagash is uh, badly weakened by fighting Teclis, and so this is kind of his revenge, trying to soak up soul stuff from other realms and repower himself. And then um, the, uh, the power guys obviously are sort of the vanguard of this, torching everything and causing these fires to consume more souls, which is how Nagash rebuilds his power. The Duel of Hatred is the campaign name. Uh, better the rage of the beast than the chill of the grave, says the Order people. Uh, and here are our actual river blades. So you get a Pure Flood Seneschal, um, and you can build them a couple different ways. With this, like, you can build them like every Ninja Turtle, basically. So you can build them with like his bow staff, his size, or his two katanas, which I think is very funny. 
I'm gonna get your crest answer with a rope sickle. I just want one with nunchucks so we can have all, all four ninja turtles. Uh, crest answers with twin spears, crest blades, which are sort of like big, um, it's hard to describe, like big uh, uh, hooks, like picks almost. Yeah, they're kind of, they're weird. And then streamers all have the river stew weapons. They're generically armed. So your base guys are generic, then you get twin spears, then you get a stream runner with quest blades. This is your champion level guy. He gets a couple of different fight options. Oh, I guess the roped sickle is kind of nunchucks, <laughs> but you can get him with a throwing knife too. That's your ranged guy. And then the torch wraiths, which are sort of like the, I don't know, the, 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 the lessers. I was going to say something terrible <laughs> to describe what they were. They're kind of the... Um, the uh, yeah, the, the 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 lesser of the ghosts, and then you got frame wraiths with their braziers and balefire torchers, and then you got the uh, balefire guard, which are like the bodyguard champions that go with the deacon, and they're just such cool miniatures. Like I love the undead. They're super easy to paint too, but like just the idea that they're kind of like Scooby Doo ghosts, except like these guys, their heads are on fire and they can't see anything, <laughs> and then these guys are just sort of like more chill, I guess. They're a little more powerful than the the sort of lesser ghosts are. Great paint jobs again from the studio. All right, so let's take a look at the river blades. So faction rules, their reaction is lethal gyre. A uh, fighter who can make this reaction after they're targeted by a melee attack, but before the hit rolls are made. For each hit roll of one from the attack action, allocate three damage points to the attacking fighter. Or if this fighter has agile, allocate three damage points to every enemy fighter within one instead. They have the most insane counter attack. So not, not like a, 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 a single like critical bad, but if you're agile, which a lot of these people are, um, agile is mm, on the streamers of the crest blades. Oh, I guess that's it. It's just these guys, the, the basic guys have it. That's good though. So your basic guys having that reaction means that you, you've got more opportunities to get that off than almost anywhere else. And then your double is river blades. Until the end of this fighter's activation, add one of the fighter's move characteristic. Um, and after each action, uh, action this fighter takes, other than the weight actions, roll a dice. On a two plus, deal one damage to a visible enemy fighter with an eight. Because they're just throwing knives all the time. They have like the ninja scroll uh, knife throw. <laughs> so just as you move basically, you can do damage on two pluses to people that are nearby. And it's to everybody, uh, oh, sorry, to one enemy fighter with an eight. It's the, the reactions with everybody if you've got the agile remark. Uh, then another double, Rapids Rising. So this isn't the everyone one. This one's available to, it's hard to see these remarks sometimes, to the Pure Flood Seneschal. I think that's the only one. No, also to the Crest Dancers. And that's it. The streamers don't get it, but everybody else is going to get it. It's the leader and, and the champions and lesser champions. Uh, until the end of the fighter's activation, they can fly when making move actions. However, they cannot move more than three inches up vertically. So they're, they're fast, but they're not that, that, like, you know, they're not super jumpy. And then finally, another double. This one's only available to the leader. Uh, white Crest Strike until the end of the fighter's activation on one of the strength of their attack actions. So that's cool. Um, but it also applies to their uh, Ithera Darts. There's, a, there's like a, a throwing knife only version of the Seneschal. So it'd be strength. I mean, he's strength four base with his uh, War Glaive. Um, five of these got his Master's Blades and then he could be six and five if he ups his strength. Uh, triple is going to be standing wave stance. Everyone can do this. A fighter can only use his ability if this fighter has not made a move or disengage action this activation. So if you're stuck in melee. And if a fighter uses this ability, they cannot make move or disengage actions. Uh, until the end of this fighter's activation, add one to the attack and strength characteristic of melee attacks made by this fighter. Until the end of the battle round, add plus one to their toughness. So that means these guys who are normally toughness three go to toughness four if they don't move during a turn. And they just stand there and fight. So once you're engaged, that's huge. Like you get to be strength three goes to four and four attacks. So, and then these guys would be five attacks at strength four, uh, one, two damage only, but like, and then your toughness four as well, which is really cool. Uh, then you've got triple, release the river. Um, I mean, only one of them can do it because it's a triple, but still super handy. Uh, release the river until the end of the battle round, ha add half the value of this ability, rounding up to the move characteristic of friendly fighters while they make move actions within six of this fighter. So, you know, up to three more inches of movement and remove base five. And then their quad is Boiling Wrath. This fighter makes a, and then sorry, that one's only available to your leader, so it's gonna wear off your leader. And your quad is Boiling Wrath. This fighter makes a number of bonus actions, which may be any combination of move, attack, and disengage actions equal to the number of fighters from this fighter's battle group that have been taken down. So if you're only one left, um, yeah. So you, you're one of the seven guys down, you get seven extra actions. <laughs> if your Seneschal's alive at the end of the game, that's gonna be bonkers. Um, and let's talk about some stats. 
So like I said, three different versions of the, um, the Pure Flood. There's the Spear version. It's got two range, four attack, strength five, two five damage. Um, but all of his dot lines are 18 wounds, toughness four, and uh, move five. Then his Master's Blades are five attacks with a one inch range, strength four, three, four damage. So a little more, it's, it's like, Big payoff, low attacks, medium attacks, medium payoff. And then finally, like the floor gets lower though, so you do base three. And then your gun is eight inch range, four attacks, strength four, two, three damage, which is kind of neat too. But you're obviously a bit more. I guess late game, if you took that one, they're almost all the same price. This one's 205, these ones are 210. Late game, if you took that one, you could really throw it some Hadouk and it'd be, it'd be a lot of damage. Um, and also you could stand still with a quad Oh, I guess you'd have to use the quad. You can only do one of these. Yeah, you can only. You couldn't do the stance as well. You'd have to do the quad, and then you just throw out seven extra attacks. Have eleven attacks. Oh, number of bonus actions. Sorry. So you'd get seven times four more attacks. You get twenty-eight attacks. Uh, your crest answer with your twin spear. So two-inch range. He's got ten wounds. Um, same core stats as the leader. Two-inch range, three attacks, strength four, two four damage, and he's got the fighter rune mark. Uh, your crest answer with the rope sickle has a three inch range with four attacks at four damage, one four damage. The, the, the bottom drops off the damage there. And then your two times a stream runner, you've got a stream runner with river weapons. Um, and this is the, uh, the river steel weapon, sorry. And it's one inch range, three attacks, strength three, one three damage. He's only got eight wounds and toughness three. And then the one with crest blades is four attacks, strength three, one two damage. But he's got the agile rune mark. So you get agile, not agile. Uh, and that makes your reaction even better. All right, let's talk about some Pyrogeists. They get Balefire Cremation. Uh, they can cremate, which means that uh, when an ability that tells you to cremate a fighter, remove that fighter from the battlefield and place a Pyre token at the end, uh, center space occupied by the fighter. At the end of the battle round, after determining control of the objectives, allocate three damage to every enemy fighter within one of the center of a, a Pyre token. So basically when you kill guys, um, you can turn them into tokens that persist on the table and do damage to stuff around them. Uh, then your double is fan the flames. Add one of the damage points allocated by each hit and each critical hit from melee attack actions made by this fighter. So all your damage is spikeable to anyone. So even your base like dude with torches, or actually sorry, your base like torch wraith, who has one three damage, could go up to two four damage. Um, on their melee, they're not their shooting. Your second double is pyro robber's curse. Until the end of this fighter's activation, add one of the strength characteristic attacks made by this fighter. Until the end of their activation, when their attacks take down enemy fighter, you cremate them. So you spend doubles to make sure that not only does your strength go up, but you also cremate guys when they die and turn them into pyre tokens. And cremate is not a reaction. It just happens. So you don't have like a bespoke reaction. You just turn guys into damage pillars. Your next double is Unblinking Guardian. Until the end of the battle round, add one of the toughness characteristic of friendly fighters to the elite and hero key marks uh, while they're within three of this fighter. So this is going to apply to your um, elites over here, your Balefire Guard. They're going to get the Pyre Keeper, the uh, Pyre Keeper, sorry, um, toughness up. So it's five goes to six all of a sudden. Makes them incredibly durable because the ghosts are really tough to like represent their ethereal stuff. They get to be base four on basically everybody. Uh, five for your bigger elites and heroes. Um, and then triple, light the pyre. Uh, fighter can only use this ability when their attack action takes down an enemy fighter. Cremate that fighter. So this allows you to do it without using the pyre robber's curse, because the only people that use the pyre robber's curse are the ones with the rune mark with the little swords. That's going to be the torch wraiths, because they have torches, uh, which means your little guys basically is what you're counting on to do the curse that takes people down. Because anyone can do the double, but you need to have the torches ability to take guys down and make them in the thing. So otherwise it'll cost you triple for everybody else. Then triple Soul Blaze, this is for your leader. Um, a fighter can use this ability if an enemy fighter has been taken down in this battle round. Uh, pick a number of visible enemy fighters with the Pyrogeist rune mark. There's everybody. Um, equal to half the value of this ability, rounding up. Each fighter you pick can make a bonus move or a bonus attack action. Some can make a bonus move action and others can make a bonus attack action. So you can mix it up. So up to three like models being able to go and do an extra bonus thing is nice for a triple. Especially if you get a high triple, you make one. And then Quad Agonizing Penance. Uh, pick a visible enemy uh, fighter within six of this fighter, and anybody can do it. That enemy fighter makes a bonus move directly towards the closest other fighter from their warband as if they were jumping. A number of inches equal to the value of this ability. When doing so, they can move uh, away from enemy fighters within one at the start of their move activation. After the move activation, allocate three damage points to that fighter and each other fighter within two of that fighter. Cremate each fighter taking down this ability. So basically, you like make a guy light on fire and run like he's Palmer from The Thing. <laughs> so when they torch Palmer from The Thing and he's running around the rec room and he runs through the wall at the end of it all, this is kind of where we're at with these guys. 
All right, so the Deacon of Flames, uh, he's got 20 wounds, toughness 5, 4 inch move, and he's got two different style lines. You can have him with tongs or a staff. Um, the staff is 2 inch range, 4 attacks, strength 4, 2, 5 damage, or you drop to um, 2, 4 damage, but you get 2 attacks with an 8 inch range. So you get a little melee blast. Um, and then he also, and I think everybody flies. Yeah, everybody flies. Um, with the tongs, you're going to get a 2 inch range, uh, 3 attacks at strength 5 with 3, 4 damage. So higher strength, lower damage I put, or the lower bottom too, so it's a little more consistent. And then his blast is the same. Uh, your Balefire Guard with the Flaming Halberd. So he's also toughness 5, but with 12 wounds. And he's got uh, 2 inch reach, 3 attacks, strength 5, 2, 4 damage. He's a pretty good hitter. And then your Balefire Guard with a Scorch Flail um, is same core stats, but 4 attacks at strength 4 with 2, 4 damage. So lower range, but heavier hitter. And remember, they can do the Unblinking Guardian stuff to up the toughness of everybody around them. Uh, your Torch Wraith is the guys who can light up for a double. Um, they've got 10 wounds of toughness 4, but they're 6 inch moves. So they're faster than the. Um, the four inch move uh, heavies. They've got the same blast, eight inch range, strength three with three attacks and one three damage, but their melee is strength three, three attacks, one three, but goes to two three if they do the pie robber's curse. Then you get your flame wraith with brazier staff, uh, two inch range, three attacks, strength four at one four damage. And they got 12 wounds instead of the, um, the 10 wounds that the torch wraiths have, but their movement goes back down to four. And if you take them with torches, uh, they get the uh, one inch range, but four attacks is strength fourth, one three damage. So a nice kind of like relatively durable, like that's a pretty big model count, honestly, for the group. Uh, let's have a look here. You're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys in the group, which is not bad for toughness four, that many wounds. Uh, and then on top of the idol of the old ones, which is an obstacle and has separate levels, it's gonna have a stuttering beam uh, for a triple. Uh, fighters other than the beast room mark within an inch of this thing can try and turn on the laser. Uh, pick a point in the battlefield that's visible to this fighter and roll a dice on a one allocate d6 damage to them. Otherwise, allocate a number of damage points equal to half the value of this ability rounding up to every enemy fighter within three of that point. So either you take damage or you just like explode an area. <laughs> Um, then Troves for a double ransack, roll a dice, on roll of 1 to 3, allocate d3 damage points to the fighter, 3 to 4, remove 3 damage, and a 5, 6, add a wild dice to your sailed wild dice from the Troves, because you basically start stealing stuff off the face of it. And then we got a new thing, which is places of power. So basically adding other terrain features that have different rules to them. So like a blood altar, it gives you a double, roll a dice, um, and this is the corpse thrown from the, um, if you wanted to use the corpse thrown from the, um, uh, whatchamacallit, the... The, the flesh of your cords. Um, and these are allowed to be like placed at the end of the train step. Players can assign one property from those listed below uh, to each piece of terrain on the battlefield. Where a piece of terrain uh, has more than one property or platform, players can assign a different property to one or more of those platforms. If they do so, uh, do not assign a property to a piece of terrain as a whole. Players do not have to assign a property to each piece of terrain. It's best to assign properties that match the feature of the terrain you've picked. So basically, these are optional rules to make things scarier. A fell sump is another one. Uh, noisome, subtract one from the minimum of one from the toughest characteristic of fighters uh, on a piece of terrain or platform with this property. Add two to the damage points allocated by each critter critical for their attacks that they make. Um, so just like commanding overlap, double high ground. Until the end of this fighter's activation, you get plus two strength to your missile weapons. Just neat little like extra stuff to do. Uh, so, yeah, Grim Sacrifice for the Stone Sacrifice. And then the College of Laxus, you get your own little bespoke campaign, and just like before, uh, each of them gets two quests. So, like, find the source, which is the source of the um, uh, water that you're tracking, the better to wake, uh, wake it and re-strengthen it with elementary rites. So you're trying to, like, get the rivers to come back to life, or, you know, be purified. Uh, then you've got Master of the Nine Currents. It's another pure flood Seneschal thing. Um, and you're going to try and do different... Arc, like basically you're trying to get an artifact you're trying to get a command ability you get your quash the wicked quest where you're doing a couple of, of uh, battles up to like leading up to it and for the power guys you get spoils of the ashes and dedication and immolation um again these are like trying to get the bale fire to like take over the whole forest one's going to get you your command abilities and one's going to get you your um artifacts and then once again, your quest is basically adding your pyre score, and when you get to the final level, you get to do your quest battle uh, battle plan, and you can do a rising conflagration where the fire is like creeping across the battlefield. And if you complete them, you get the roaring bale fire as your uh, your location. You get to live next to the bale fire, <laughs> um, and then you get your special campaigns, which again can be played by either side against somebody else, which is great. 
and then reprints the cards in here, and then background tables for both warbands. And that's it, Pyre and Flood. <clears throat> so again, of the two sort of formats for these, this one's smaller. Again, I don't know the price points for these when they send them to me, so I can't comment on price. I really like this format for Warcry, where you expand, like I actually like this for both games. I like this for Kill Team and for Warcry. The Warcry ones, you get two new warbands, you get the terrain set, you get your rules, you get your campaign. You get the same thing for Kill Team. I like how accessible Warcry is because of this. I also like that the starter set for Warcry came with the base terrain you use in all these missions. The disconnect for the Kill Team one is you had to buy the Beta Decima like, train pack separately from all the boxes. This one building off the starter set is the way to do it. And I think these continue to be my favorite products that Games Workshop's making for their skirmish games. Warcry is great. The campaign system is really good. The warbands are all characterful. Like I like that you turn guys into fire when you're playing as the Night Haunts. Um, I like that you have all these stances and like weird sort of like kata. Like, it's the uh, equilibrium katas for all the elves. Um, and that your quests reflect it. The game's simple. It's easy to play, um, but it's super fun. And I do think of these two parallel design streams, the Warcry stuff remains the best, not just value, but like <clears throat> the best curated experience of the game that it's trying to be. Um, it's not too complicated. I get just, as a veteran wargamer, I get just as much enjoyment out of this as someone new to playing the hobby. And I can play this game with more people because it's more accessible to more levels of engagement. So yeah, great job, Pyre Flood, love these. Um, I like that we're slowly building a, a, a temple out of this all stuff till axes is slowly coming to life. Uh, with all the weird trees and stuff like that. Uh, it really fits and it keeps it keeps going well. It's not that I don't like the Kill Team one, but I do think of, if I'm balancing the two of these reviewing them today, this is still the better product um, as far as like delivering the experience it wants to be. And I think that's partly to do with the game it's for, but also they keep kind of, they've got their format, they've hit their stride. We're still adding cool terrain pieces to the, um, to the, uh, the the core game, but you don't need to have it to play the core game. It's like uh, it's like having a, almost like a loot crate basically that you get for Warcry every month. More of that, um, and I like the fact that the Warcry box set was the launch point for this, not having to buy two boxes and then like pick where your starter is going to be, like they did with the Beta Decimal one. I think this is just the better design stream. So good job. So thanks for workshop signing along. Thanks for you guys for watching. We'll see you for another one of these. Thanks, Tom Ash. Have a great day.